Welcome to this Wisel tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to use a matrix in reporting services reports. What you'll learn in this session is how to work with matrix report item. We'll start by showing you how to add one to a report and then how to choose the fields for the matrix. Then we'll show you how you can add row and column totals, how you can group by multiple fields, and then finally how you can add multiple aggregate statistics to a matrix that you've already built. So let's get started. A matrix report in reporting services is a lot like a cross-tab report in Microsoft Access or even a basic pivot table in Microsoft Excel. It allows you to group your data both by row and by column and generate some sort of aggregate statistic about items in the group. So the example we'll build in our video is we'll group our film records by the studio which made them and the film certificate it was awarded and we'll generate the average length in minutes. We'll also add row totals and column totals and then finally a grand total right down at the bottom right hand corner. So that's what we're going to build. Before you get started with the matrix you need to make sure you've created a data set which includes at least three fields. You'll need one field for the column groups which in this case is the film certificate one field for the row groups, which in this case is the studio name, and then one field which you can use to generate the aggregate statistics, in this case it's the film's runtime in minutes. Once you've created the data set, you simply need to head to the toolbox and then double click the matrix tool. When I look at my report now, I'll find that the matrix is sitting there and I've got three areas for which I need to choose a field. So for the row groups, I'm going to choose the studio name. You might be able to tell from the icon sitting at the left hand side that this area is already uh, assigned to a group and if I look down in the row groups panel I can see that the studio name has been added there automatically. Likewise when I choose for the columns, the certificate field, I'll see that the certificate field gets added to the column groups area. Finally I'm going to choose the film runtime in minutes to generate my aggregate statistics which by default will leave me with a sum all I'm going to do now is modify this to give me the average. I can right click on the text box, choose expression, and then simply change the sum function for the AVG function instead. Once I click OK, I already have the basic layout of my matrix created and a quick preview will show me the information and show me how much work I've got to do in order to tidy it up. So there are several things that I can do to improve the basic layout of my matrix apart from obviously modifying the, the formatting of my row headers and column headers I'm not going to bore you with uh, how to change colors and things but I could add things like a column header which spans the full width of the table and indicates that these are the film certificates I can modify the number formatting to control the number of decimal places and perhaps even more importantly I can add row totals or row averages I suppose and column averages as well as a grand average for the overall table. So to do all those things I need to go back to the design view and if I click inside the table I'm going to quickly modify the width of my uh, my studio name column and then maybe I'll quickly apply a background color so as not to bore you too much I'll just do it for these two headers and then that's as far as I'll go with basic formatting. What I'd like to do next is insert a header for the, all the columns which spans the entire width of the table. To do that I need to right click on the row selector at the left hand side of the table and choose to insert a row. Now I need to insert this above the row that I've selected. And I've actually got two choices for that, either inside the group or outside the group. If I was to do this inside the group what I would actually do is generate a new heading for each individual column in my matrix. So what I'd like to do is insert a row that's outside of the group. Now when I do that it looks as though I've only created a single cell. I'm going to type in a quick title of film certificate. But When I preview the report now we should see that the heading spanned the entire width of the table so I could center that, that heading across the entire table. 
Next, I can quickly modify the number format of my value cells. So if I head back to the design view again, I can right click on the cell containing the average function and choose text box properties. On the number tab of the dialog box, I can choose to display the, uh, the, the numbers as a number rather than de the default format and I can control the number of decimal places. I'll leave them set at two for this example. I can click OK and then preview the report again and the numbers should appear a lot more sensibly. And while I've, I'm talking about the numbers, I'm going to then add in the, the column and row totals. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the design view again and I'm going to right click on this cell. And then I can choose to add totals using the menu. If I add a total row, that will appear at the bottom of the table and will give me the grand average for each certificate. So if I click row, I'll add the, uh, the total row. If I right click on that same cell again and choose to add a total column this time, there we go, I add a total column. All I need to do now to get the grand total, or in fact this time the grand average for the entire table, is to select the Film Runtime Minutes field for the bottom right hand corner cell. Which if I do that, annoyingly, slightly annoyingly at least, it adds the sum function again because that's the default whenever you choose to, uh, to add a numerical field to a matrix. So I'm going to right click on that cell and choose to modify the expression and I can finally simply update sum to AVG instead. When I click OK, I'll give us a quick different background colour so that we can see that that's clearly, clearly different and preview the report. I'll have all of the values that I want to see. One thing that I finally forgot to do was update the number format for our grand total as well. You can see that's got more than two decimal places, but you should be able to easily work out how to do that. So there's our basic matrix, bar a bit of font and background color formatting. It looks pretty presentable. Sorting records in a matrix is a little bit different to uh, what you'll be familiar with from sorting in normal tables. Uh, it's actually a lot more similar to what you, uh, what you would do in a grouped table. So let's say I wanted to change the order of my studio names to, uh, to reverse alphabetical order. If I head back to the design view, ordinarily to sort a table, you might expect to right click at uh, the top left hand corner of the table and view the tablet's properties. Then on the sorting tab, you'd expect to add a sort, and here I'll choose to sort by studio name in Z to A order. If I click OK and then preview the report, somewhat strangely, that won't have any effect whatsoever. I'm still in alphabetical order. So back to the design view, I'm going to simply undo what I've just done. I'm going to take that sort away from the table. And instead, I'm going to use the groups panel down here at the bottom of the uh, design view. I'm going to right click on my studio name group and choose to view its properties. And on the sorting tab in this dialog box, you can see that there's already a sort order there. Grouped fields are all automatically sorted in ascending order. So if I want to modify this, I can simply change the order from A to Z to Z to A, choose OK, and then finally preview my report and I'll see that my sorting now has had the desired effect. In a matrix, it's possible to group your rows or columns by more than one field at the same time. So in this example, what we have so far is a basic matrix containing groups of film decades and country names, and then a count of the, of the films that were released in that combination of decade and country. If we have a quick little preview, we can see a slightly heavily biased towards uh, towards later years and in the, uh, the USA. But what we have is, um, is, is again, it's a fairly simple matrix. What we're going to do now, though, we're going to add in a second column to the uh, to the row groups, which will group individually by year. So we'll break down each decade into individual years. So to do, to do that, back in the design view. We already have the uh, the data in the data set already. These are actually calculated films, the film decade, year, and month. And these are all derived from the film's release date. What we're going to do is we're going to drag the film year. I'm simply going to click and drag using the mouse and position it just to the right of the film decade. 
Now it's important that you get this the right way around. Can you see that as I move the mouse ever so slightly left and right, the icon that I'm seeing, this, uh, this, this, this blue bar, changes its direction? I want to make sure that it's pointing towards the left so that it goes in as part of the, uh, the groups area, not as uh, another value. So if I make sure it's pointed to the left and release the mouse button, I ought to get a new column called Film Year and in the Groups panel, a new group as well. You can see that this is ever so slightly indented below Film Decade, indicating that it's a, that it's a subgroup of, uh, of Decade. So if I preview the report, after all that uh, explanation, that's the sort of thing we should see. So as well as showing each decade, we've now got things broken down by year as well. And you can carry on with that process if I go back to the design view. This will, I think, make things look a little bit too messy. But if I drag from the report data window from my data set, I'm going to drag fill month. And again, I'm going to position this just to the, the right of the film year. Again, making sure that that blue bar is pointing towards the left. If I preview the report now, I get my data broken down into even further groups. So I've got decade, year, and then month in year. But it just shows you how far you can go. With a bit more data in my, uh, in my database, this would generate some slightly more useful information than what I have here. As well as having multiple grouped fields in a matrix, you can also have multiple statistics or multiple aggregates as well. So I've gone back to the, the example we were creating earlier on, which is grouping our films by studio name and certificate. And at this point, all we have is the average of the film's runtime in minutes. What I'd also like to do is show the, the total runtime in minutes for each combination of studio and certificate. And to do that, I need to head to the report data window and simply drag in my runtime minutes field again. Now I can position this in one of two places. Uh, again, I can drag it just to the, uh, the right hand side of studio name. And this time I want to make sure that the blue bar is pointing to the right hand side this time. Alternatively, I can drag it over to the right hand edge so that the sum would go after the average. Uh, it doesn't really matter which of the two I choose to do. As I'm here, I'm going to drop it to the right hand side of the average. And what I should find is I get a new column. If I make the column wide enough, you'll be able to see what it's doing, which is the sum of the runtime in minutes. So if I preview that report now, for each certificate, I have two columns. One is the average and the other is the sum. Now I could carry on adding more and more aggregates to the matrix just in the same way I've shown here by clicking and dragging in the same numerical field multiple times. But at some point I'll want to add some column headings which indicate which statistic I'm looking at. So I'm going to head back to the design view and I'm going to insert a new row that sits below the current certificate title. So if I select any cell in that row and then right click on the row selector I can choose to insert a row which goes below the current one. To begin with, it looks as though it's just inserted another single cell, which spans the width of all of the columns in the certificate. But if I right click onto that cell, I can choose to split them, and then I get one heading for each column. So I can type in a quick title there of average, and one here for total. And when I preview that report, I'll see that I get average and total repeated for every certificate. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.